We're joined now by a very important uh, leader, Shashi Tharoor. Uh, thanks very much, Shashi, for being with us. Congratulations. You've had a, a difficult election campaign in uh, Tiruvannantapuram, but you won. And so congratulations for that. Um, Thank you. There is intense speculation, as you might expect now, uh, given that uh, the performance of the BJP hasn't quite been what they would have expected. Uh, Nitish Kumar and Chandra Babu Naidu, obviously, there is conversations uh, on whether the India Alliance can actually reach out to them. Is that something at all realistic? Well, actually, even as we're speaking now, the India Alliance is meeting at the leadership level. So I honestly don't know what the discussions are and where that's heading. But I would imagine that there is an understandable sense of flux everywhere at the moment because uh, the BJP is so substantially short of a majority by itself that it needs uh, reliable allies to stay with it. Uh, I'm assuming that they are in conversation with their own allies to begin with and uh, that other possibilities will also be examined by the parties concerned. But for now, right now, I think the two alliances are meeting within themselves and we'll see what comes out of that process. Mr. Tharoor, uh, the NDA is taking claim uh, this evening itself. Um, some would suggest that, you know, the timing indicates a willingness to move quickly, not uh, wait for demands to be made by alliance members uh, or partners, etc., etc. Uh, how do you see this move? Look, I mean, I think, I think, you know, it's their business and I'm not the one to comment on it, but I do believe uh, as somebody who, who is part of this uh, wonderful sort of festival of democracy that we've just concluded, that uh, the BJP is going to have to learn to work uh, better with allies. I think uh, from what we saw of the way in which they treated their allies in the first couple of terms, uh, there was a kind of take it or leave it attitude to many of their decisions. Uh, and and uh, they got away with it because the Allies knew they weren't needed there. BJP had a majority by themselves. Now the Allies know very much that they're indispensable, that without Allies, the BJP can't pass its budget, can't pass laws, can't stay in office. And I think that's going to change very much the tone, tenor and modus operandi of the government. And that will be for the good. That will be better for our country's democracy. Uh, I've often argued that, uh, you know, we've been underrating the value of coalition governments in our politics. Uh, and I think it'll be good for the BJP as well to learn to work with others. And I hope that will extend to working with the opposition in Parliament as well, because we are not going to be an insubstantial opposition. Uh, we have uh, the numbers that uh, require them to take us very seriously. I, I'll talk about Parliament in a moment, but I just want to go on a little bit longer about the, the you know, this entire talk of alliances at this stage. The reason I, I focus on Chandra Babu Naidu is because there has been an acrimonious relationship between him and the BJP in the past. He's tweeted about, um, he's tweeted about the use of agencies. He's tweeted about um, uh, b b institutions being impacted, etc., etc. This is very much the language which the India Alliance has used in your election campaign this time. Is that why you feel? that possibly Chandra Babu Naidu may not be a reliable partner of the NDA. Uh, is, is that your sense? That's not for me to say, but don't forget that I was in Parliament when the TDP of Mr. Naidu led, introduced and led the debate on a no-confidence motion against the Modi government. And they did so because of their bitter experiences as an ally. I'm sure they had to do a lot of hard thinking before agreeing to be a pre-poll ally of the BJP. And now that they've seen that the BJP needs them in ways that the BJP did not need them before when they were allies the previous time, my guess is there's going to be a little more uh, uh, hard bargaining within the alliance. But that's not, again, something that I can be privy to. Sure. It's happening with the NDA vision. Mr. It will happen. I've heard some very tough language used by the TDP speakers during that no confidence motion not so long ago. The NDA has opened its account in Kerala. Uh, you've had an extremely close election, which you won with 37.2% of the votes. Uh, Rajiv Chandrasekhar ended up with 35.5% of the votes. Um, you know, do you believe that the BJP is progressively making a substantial entry into Kerala, something which was perhaps unimaginable till earlier? No, I think we certainly will have to analyze this much more closely and, and certainly taking local inputs into account. But one thing that's pretty clear is that Suresh Gopi, whom I've known for many years as a friend of mine, wasn't always uh, in the BJP. Uh, he ran an overtly secular campaign. He went out of his way to appeal to minority voters in Thrissur. This is not your classic sort of BJP communal appeal that we're all used to, particularly in northern India. And so if at all what you're saying... Uh, is, is to be taken one step further, 
it would be that the BJP can only be viable where they understand the limits of the communal appeal and speak uh, uh, to minorities in language the minorities can appreciate. Remember that in Kerala, only 53% of the population is Hindu. And our minorities have no minority complex. They feel they're as much fully stakeholders of Kerala society, economics, politics, culture, entertainment, the works, as anyone from the so-called majority community. And therefore, from our point of view, uh, Kerala has been a very different place to live and work in. Uh, what Mr. Gopi was able to do, I think, was, of course, he also leveraged his own celebrity status as a movie star, successful movie star, as well as the host of uh, the Malayalam version of Korn Banega Krorpati. And uh, he, he um, was able as well to come across to many minorities as somebody who could represent them without any of the communal overt uh, messaging that we've seen with BJP candidates elsewhere. So if the BJP is willing to transform itself into a different sort of party, uh, at least in Kerala, it might do better. But they are facing a huge challenge. For example, they tried to reach out to Christian minorities across the state during last Christmas. But uh, the Christian minorities were looking on their WhatsApps and on their mobile phones at pictures of burned and destroyed churches from Manipur, assaults on Christian pastors uh, in, in uh, Jharkhand and Chhattisgarh and elsewhere, uh, uh, attacks on churches during Christmas week happening in three or four North Indian states. And they looked at all this and said, if this is what the BJP is doing elsewhere, why should we trust them here? Sure. And there it fell flat in many places. So that would have to be something the BJP would have to tackle. They would have to amend uh, their approach and mend their ways if they really wanted to appeal uh, to voters in a place like Kerala. Uh, Mr. Tharoor, you know, the, the number which the uh, India Alliance was talking about was 295. Many of your leaders said that, no, you know, we are going to get to, to 295. That didn't, uh, that didn't happen. You did, of course. Uh, do much better than many others. Uh, you came, uh, ended up with 232. But would you say that Karnataka was the biggest disappointment and also Bihar? And I ask about Karnataka because of the recent assembly election results where you did very well. I know that assembly election results don't translate into uh, national election results, but the, the, the gap between the elections would have suggested that perhaps a wave may extend. Are you disappointed greatly at Karnataka? And what about Bihar? Yeah, disappointed a bit in Karnataka. I wouldn't say greatly because we got nine seats, if I remember right. And we yes. were expecting there in, in the neighborhood of, of, of between 12 and 17, but the lower figure would have been acceptable. Uh, nine became a bit of a blow, I will admit that. Uh, Bihar, certainly everything we saw from the ground appeared to involve a huge degree of enthusiasm for Tejasvi Yadav, his party and his message. And that was, was belied. The, the Congress did win. Uh, a couple of seats, and we are very happy that we have good representatives, including the re-elected MP, Mohammad Javed, who had served with me in the last uh, parliament, and I know to be a first-class uh, representative of Kishan Ganj in Bihar. Uh, the third state where we, we thought we might do slightly better was Madhya Pradesh. We didn't expect a total blanking out. We thought we'd get a, a handful of seats, and that did not happen. Um, on the other hand, we did very well in uh, unexpected places, uh, Rajasthan, uh, and Haryana gave us very good numbers, uh, and those are both states where we had zero last time around. Sure. You know, there's some, some wins, some losses, some gains, some, some setbacks. On the whole, I would say the Congress has much to be happy about, but we will need to do, of course, a state-by-state -state analysis. You haven't mentioned Delhi. Uh, we certainly did not expect to lose every seat in Delhi, and having campaigned in Himachal, I can tell you, we didn't expect to lose every seat in Himachal. Right. There will have to be some internal... Uh, analysis done at the state level sure. in some of the cases as well. Mr. Tharoor, what happens to Bayanad or, or Rai Bareilly for that matter as far as Rahul Gandhi is concerned? He has to pick one of the two. That question is above my pay grade, Vishnu. I don't make that decision. I don't think that... I, 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 am, I, I, I am sure you have an answer to that question. <laughs> I'm sure I, I, I do believe that, uh, that the whatever choice is made will be the right one for the party and for the country because uh, both are very important signals and both are places where Rahul Gandhi won a thumping majority of multiple lakhs. I think it's, it's very, very good that we have signaled once again that we're back in UP with a bank, uh, which I think has a special value given the two things. Number one, the idea that the old slogan you remember in the 60s and 70s was that uh, uh, he who rules UP rules the country, and that's certainly an important fact. And uh, the second thing is the fact that we've done so well in UP with 42 MPs from there in the opposition.